Have you ever asked yourself what the distinction is between dependent and independent variables? If yes, you've stumbled upon digital gold here. Because in this video, I will explain to you in three parts what the difference between those types of variables is and what function they play in your quantitative research design. After covering the basics, I will go a bit more in depth and explain why this designation of variables in the context of survey studies and other methods is often not correct and how to correctly describe them. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreibe. Many thanks to Scribber for sponsoring this video. More about Scribber later. Part 1. Why do you need independent and dependent variables? In a quantitative research design, your goal is to test a theoretical relationship. One of the building blocks of theory are constructs that consist of variables. In order to test a relationship, you must first determine the variables of a hypothesis and ensure that you can measure them. As the name suggests, variables can change. They can experience various forms of change. For example, changing human behavior such as the tendency to choose more organic fruit at the supermarket. A variable can also vary by location, such as in other countries with the highest subsidies for organic fruit. Moreover, a variable can change over time, such as a fruit vendor's profit per quarter. A hypothesis typically includes two variables and their relationship to each other. It's about how one variable affects the other. That means the hypothesis expresses a relationship between cause and effect. For example, eating a banana immediately after exercise increases muscle regeneration. In this hypothesis, eating a banana is the cause. This is the independent variable. Increased muscle regeneration is the expected effect. This is the dependent variable. Okay, and why is the first now independent? That's because this variable can be varied arbitrarily. The variable could also be drinking a protein shake or eating two bananas. In that sense, this variable does not depend on other variables, hence independent variable. The second one, which represents the effect, is called dependent because the value of this variable depends on the cause. In reality, however, independent and dependent variables are often not as clear-cut as they may seem. In many real-world situations, multiple variables can be both independent and dependent at the same time, depending on the specific research question and the level of analysis. For example, in a study looking at the relationship between income and education, income could be considered the independent variable at the individual level, but when looking at the relationship at the societal level, education could be considered the independent variable. Additionally, it's important to note that the cause and effect relationship between both variables can be difficult to establish as it may be influenced by other factors. That is why we need experiments. Part 2. Variables in experimental designs. These terms originated in the context of scientific experiments. To test the example hypothesis, you could set up an experimental design that examines a sample of athletes. Under supervision, each participant receives a banana. This is how the independent variable is measured. Then they can let off steam during the workout and afterwards their muscle regeneration, the dependent variable, is measured. In this setting, the independent variable can now be changed, which is also referred to as manipulation. Let's look at three examples. For an experiment, the temperature inside a car is changed. People sitting in the car indicate how they feel at each temperature. Temperature is the independent variable. The dependent variable is the reported well-being of the occupants. Example 2. You want to investigate how smartphone usage affects heart rate. The independent variable is smartphone usage and the dependent variable is heart rate. 3. You want to find out how time spent working from home affects the work performance of your employees. In this example, the independent variable is time spent working from home and the dependent variable is work performance. Before we continue with part 3, let me just say a few words about the sponsor of this video, Scribber. 
If you are looking for a proofreading service or plagiarism check for your scientific work, I can wholeheartedly recommend the team at Scribber. Just have a look at scribber.com and send me a short email at info at for an exclusive coupon code. Part 3. Variables in cross-sectional studies. In an experiment, data is collected at different times. This allows the researcher to manipulate the independent variable. In studies that only collect data from different individuals at a single point in time, this is not the case. This is also referred to as cross-sectional research. An example of this is an online survey. Here, variables cannot be manipulated and thus no causal relationships can be tested. The terminology of independent and dependent variables would therefore be incorrect. Nevertheless, everyone knows what is meant when you talk about it. But if you want to be completely correct, you can use the words predictor variable or prognostic variable instead of independent and response variable instead of dependent variable. After all, predictions about variables are also made in cross-sectional studies. Only causality is not assumed. For experiments, this alternative terminology also works. You could theoretically always use the designation predictor variable and response variable, but independent and dependent only in the context of experiments. Measuring variables. Of course, the method is of the utmost importance here. For a quantitative study design, experiments or standardized surveys can be used. But depending on the field you're in, collecting sensor data or other measurements or collecting documents, texts or social media data can be the basis for a quantitative research design. Each method produces data that has different levels of measurement or scale levels. These levels decide uh, about the quality of your variables and what statistical operations are available to you to test your hypotheses. It's important to note that in order to make accurate inferences and conclusions, variables must be measured in a reliable and valid manner. Reliability refers to the consistency of measurement, while validity refers to the accuracy of measurement. For example, if you are measuring the number of organic fruits sold in a supermarket, it is important that the counting method is consistent and accurate. If your variables consist of numerical values, for example, numbers of bananas eaten, then the relationship between the dependent and independent variable can be calculated using a regression analysis. Exactly how to do this is a topic for another video, but at least you now have a small glimpse of what you can do after determining and measuring your variables. I hope this tutorial was helpful and if you want to delve further into this, I can recommend the textbooks written by Andy Field. And now click on the next video to learn more about scientific writing and research methods.